Hey guys, we set up Docker for our server, but we were unable to connect to Redis and it was causing it to crash. So that's what we're going to do in this video is get Redis and PostgreSQL running um, so that way our uh, Docker container can access it. And the way we're going to do this is actually through using Docker Compose, which allows you to compose multiple Docker containers at once. It just makes it an easy way. Alternatively, we could just create three Docker files, um, one for our server, Postgres and Redis, and then start up each instance individually. But it's a lot easier to use something like Docker Compose uh, to do this for us. Now, if you don't have Docker Compose already, this is a separate install from Docker. So just come on over here to uh, this URL and download it. So we're gonna be copying this uh, Docker Compose file right here. This is a good starter one. And this is just from the getting started from the Docker docs. And I highly recommend going through this if you haven't already, because it's very good. Okay, so I'm gonna create a new file in our Slack server. And it's called docker compose.yaml. And we're gonna paste this guy in. So right here, this is the name of the service. So each ser service is a container. So this is one container. And in this case, it can be multiple because we can replicate it. As you see, it says replicas five. And then you can actually allocate uh, limits for the resources and whatnot. We're not gonna worry about any of that because we're just gonna keep it simple. So we can remove that. Here you notice um, it tells you which ports are um, being exposed uh, similar to when we were doing docker run and we could expose ports and then here our image so our image is called slack clone server and the port that I want to open up is 8081 8081 and then you'll see how it says the word networks here um, we're calling this webnet this is just creating a network that we can our services can interact with each other Okay, so next thing we wanna do is add Postgres. So we're gonna be using the Postgres image from Docker to do this. And we're just gonna be using the latest uh, one. And if we look at the documentation for this, um, we'll notice we can actually come in down here and set environment variables. And we can set the password, user, um, and the database as well to match uh, what we have in our uh, over here what we're connecting to so I'm gonna create a new service you can right here the name of it can be anything so I'm just gonna call it DB you could call it Postgres whatever you like and the image here I'm gonna call it Postgres and uh, that'll just go ahead and grab the latest version of Postgres and then here it's important to make sure you add it to the webnet network so networks and we'll say webnet and then here, all I'm gonna do is say environment, and we're gonna uh, set some environment variables. So they have special environment variables that they talk about here where we can set the password, and I'm gonna set that to Postgres. We can set the username, and I'll set that to Postgres as well. And we can even set the name of our database, copy you and I'll call it Slack. And I just matched these up with what I have over here in my index of so SQL is connecting to a database called Slack with a username as Postgres and a password as Postgres. So you wanna make sure those match up um, in your Docker file or you can change them if you like. Okay, uh, so now we can access our Docker file or uh, our Postgres DB, but uh, there's one thing that's different. So by default, SQLize will try to connect to localhost. So we're gonna say host, and we're gonna pass in the host. So we're gonna say db host or localhost. So if we didn't even add this host variable, it would by default um, look for localhost, but inside Docker, we need to change what the host is. Oops. So the host is actually gonna be called db. So we're gonna set a environment variable down here in our web. 
so postgres or not postgres db host and i'm going to call this db um, so db is the host and the reason why it's called db is because the names match up like that so if i called this postgres i would put postgres here and so this environment variable is going to be passed to our uh, sqlize here and it's going to be an environment variable that uh, automatically docker adds for us so now we're going to get that host but if we run it locally we'll just use localhost all right so that's good and i'm going to save that over here and so our uh, postgres database is all set up now we want to add a redis image so there's not really any special configuration we need to do here um, we're just going to use the uh, redis image so i'll come over here say redis image it's going to be redis and really i just want to make sure it's on the same network and there's not really any um, change i need to make to it besides that so set webnet and then like this if we go into uh, pubsub.js you'll notice how we have the host so I'm just going to say process.env.redis host or this so this is what we're going to run if we're just in development mode otherwise we'll use redis host so we'll come over here and set redis host and again the host name is equal to the name that we have there okay we can close those so because I just changed uh, pubsub and I just changed uh, index.js we're gonna have to rebuild our docker image but this should this looks pretty good to me so let's go ahead and do npm run build that'll build out our um, source code and then we're just gonna say docker build and we're gonna be building slack clone server and it's in this folder and then when that's done building we're going to be calling a command called docker compose and up and what that'll do is I'll actually run all these and build the uh, images now I already have Postgres and Redis on my computer but if you don't have these images docker will automatically fetch them for you so I'm gonna run docker docker compose up and what will happen is it'll go ahead and start up all this stuff and here we see the logs for what's going on okay so we can see here's what's going on with our database it's called db1 we can look at the logs for that here's our web uh, what the logs for that and then here's redis we can see the logs for that container so there's I believe three containers running right now if we look at the very top um, we can see Yep, one, two, three. And you'll notice we're getting a SQLized connection refused error now. And uh, which is quite odd. Notice how we don't get Redis. So Redis connected okay. But we are unable to connect to our database, our Postgres database. And uh, it's for a different reason than you may think. So it's not because we put the wrong host here, um, but it's because our database is not up before our website or a web uh, container ran so basically this container started up and tried to connect to the database before the database container was up so there is a little documentation about this on uh, docker and basically you just want to um, uh, get the order of what your containers start now you can just say uh, depends on so that means uh, DB container would start before the web container starts but sometimes it takes longer for the database to actually get running even if the container starts than this so what they recommend doing is using a script called wait for it which just does not run your application until um, your database is up it waits for it so we're actually going to install this wait for it script and use this so I'm just going to click on wait for it here and I'll provide a link in the description below to get to this 
and I'm just going to click on raw and we're just going to say save as and download that and so I'm just going to control C out of this um, and it's gracefully stopping this and then when that's done I'm going to move wait for it over and we're going to be using this this command so if we provide a command to our web this overwrites the default command in our slack clone server so instead of running node index it's going to run wait for it db dash dash so this is the correct thing because we call ours db but if you use a different name here you want to make sure that matches up because that's what we're going to wait for um, and then we're going to dash dash and for us we're doing node and we're running index.js now this wait for it needs to actually be in our container now to run it so in our docker file we're going to have to copy it over so we're going to have to copy wait for it.sh into our container that way we can actually run it okay so that stopped running and you can run docker compose down and that will for sure um, remove these containers from running all right so I'm just gonna move from my downloads folder wait for it to here and we just have to change mod it so it's executable so wait for it and because we edited our docker file over here we're gonna have to rebuild so docker build our slack clone and then once we do that we can run docker compose up and I believe if we didn't if I didn't make any mistakes it should uh, wait for the DB to start up and then once the DB started up um, it should run um, all right so we're done with that I'll do docker compose up and we can see it run all right so we see some DB logs and we can see our web we see the usual output that we get where it spits out all this junk um, now notice how we have it open on port 8081 like how our front end expects so we can actually come over here and I'm just gonna give this a refresh and we can actually register a user here bob.com say Bob as a username can submit so we just create a user and we can create a team and you know you can do all the lovely things so hey how are you and whatnot you can do check things out so it's working as usual the only difference is our backend is now running in a docker container our whole entire backend our postgres database redis and uh, our express server are all running in a docker container which is pretty sweet now there's one small thing that uh, is not working how we like and that's if I control C now also you might be annoyed that this is uh, running in the foreground and basically taking the command line away there is a way to run this in the background so I'm just gonna say docker compose down to get rid of that and say docker compose uh, up and you just do dash D and it'll run it in the background like so and then I can run docker container ls I can see my containers running and hey I want to see the logs for my slack um, server I can do docker container and I just copied the ID for that docker container logs and you post the ID and you can get the logs and so you can do that for any containers ID so I can get the logs for Postgres or the other one and now I still have my command line back but I can go look at the logs if I want to um, but when I restart and when I call compose up the data is not saved so we're gonna crash because our Postgres database did not save the data in between us shutting down docker right we destroyed the container and we created a new container and when we created the new container a new totally new Postgres database started up which is not how we want it we want it to persist the Postgres data 
no matter what, even if we destroy the container and restart it. Um, so that's what we're going to look at in the next video and uh, making sure our Postgres database data persists. But you should have a good idea of how to set up um, Docker and uh, using Redis and we got Postgres SQL running. Uh, and you can add limitations on the resources I you saw earlier and there's plenty of other settings um, that we can play with, tune, and change. But this gives you a basic idea of how to set this up and then you can further customize for the needs of what you want. Well that's it for this video guys and thank you for watching.